How's it going, everyone? It's Spencer here with Spencer Stuff. Welcome to the community. I appreciate you being here. Welcome to the very first episode of my new series called The Stuff. I'm going to be covering different articles every week of different topics that I really do enjoy, and hopefully they won't be too terribly long-winded. I'm going to go through the articles and then give my impressions about any tech, cars, video games, anything else along those lines, and kind of cover the new and exciting things going on during the week. But before I jump into this first topic, I ask that you please hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell notification icon so you're informed of everything I upload in the future. Thank you so much. So I'm just gonna read through this article and then give my impressions. This first one is from The Verge. It says Samsung's and Google's new audio format will take on Dolby Atmos this year. Samsung and Google are ready to push a new standard, Eclipse Audio. This format will enable 3D audio experiences on certain YouTube videos later this year. With support available across Samsung TVs in the 2025 lineup. Over the years, Samsung notably hasn't supported Dolby Vision HDR for dynamic HDR metadata, choosing instead to promote its preferred alternative, HDR10+. Now it seems ready to make a similar competitive push for open source 3D audio. Eclipse Audio could eventually serve as a free alternative to Dolby Atmos. The dominant 3D audio format that hardware makers like Samsung pay to license for their TVs and other equipment. Samsung says that similar to Atmos, this audio format supports adjusting audio data such as location and intensity of sounds along with spatial reflections to create a 3D experience. The two companies first announced their partnership to develop spatial audio technology in 2023, and they called it Immersive Audio Model and Formats, or IAMF. At the time, Samsung Spatial Audio head, uh, I, <laughs> Wu Hyun Nam, said that the format would provide a competitive open source 3D audio framework for creation, delivery, and playback. The IAMF spec also has been adopted in the Alliance for Open Media, a group that has been pushing for royal free codex support since 2015. Um, it counts companies like Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Netflix, along with Samsung and Google among its members. If they also add support for this audio format, it could help it catch on, although it's already taken years for the AV1 codec to see more use. Samsung and Google are also creating a certification program for the Telecommunications Technology Association to ensure consistent audio quality across devices using the format, which also sounds similar to the way companies like Dolby and THX managing the label for their specs. We expect to hear more about Eclipse Audio at CES as it kicks off. If I'm Dolby right now, I may be a little bit nervous as to what is happening. Samsung and Google teaming up to make the spatial audio format. I mean, I'd be kind of worried in all honesty. I know HDR 10 plus didn't take off as it said in the article, but it's because there was already HDR10 as well as Dolby Vision there to kind of fill up that space. And we didn't need another dynamic metadata format. But there really is no other spatial audio format out there that's open source, that's really usable for the everyday consumer, as well as these larger companies. And I think if they're able to pull this off, we have a chance to see a brand new thing come to the consumer space. Now, what do I mean by this? Essentially, for the every, everyday average content creator on YouTube, or along any of these other sites that they might be using, this spatial audio allows them to be more creative. It gives them a chance to maybe do binaural audio uh, to a more efficient level, to a T. You're gonna be able to choose which speakers you wanna format for as opposed to having to run everything in stereo. And that could create a very fun and entertaining home theater experience for a lot of people. I think this is gonna affect more of the home theater than anything else. As well as this, these larger companies are now going to be able to put broadcasts in I mean, I'm talking about football potentially being able to be shown in Dolby Atmos or like a spatial format, which is huge. I mean, if you know how immersive that 5.1 can be, imagine having the fans up in your top speakers and then you have the announcers at the bottom level and you're able to create a fully immersive environment in TV broadcasts and movies and other things along those lines. And you're not having to pay a licensing fee, which is huge. The licensing fee part, although it's not a big deal for these larger companies, for the smaller creators, this is a massive step in the right direction. And I think that Eclipse Audio could potentially make a huge splash for everyone involved with making these products for this. So all in all, I think we are going to see it improve. I think we're gonna see a consistent growth with this. 
and I'm very excited to see spatial audio come to YouTube and other formats later this year. I hope you all like this reaction. I'm gonna, like I said, try and do these every week and try and come out with something new and exciting to talk about. Anyway, I hope you have a good day, great evening, whatever it might be in your area, and I will talk to you all later. Thank you all for watching. See you later.